I captured Enzo's body performances using the Accents Link suit and the Manus Prime 2 gloves. I used 4.27 to retarget all of my body mocap FBX data and transferred those animations as U assets to UE5. It was important to get accurate finger data for some of the performances, so I did not use the UE5.0 IK retargeter due to finger retargeting issues, and I did not use LiveLink either due to optimization issues. However, had 5.1 Preview been released at the time, I would have been able to get one-to-one -one retargeting thanks to the new ability to import a pose. And I will explain all of this in detail later. Inside of the Accent software, MVN Animate Pro, I will use this simple calibration to demonstrate how I brought my data into Unreal. Accent's FBX data is skeletal, and Unreal needs a mesh assigned to it. So using this puppet Accent has provided, all I do is drop the FBX into my project. In the import options, I assign it to the puppet skeleton, and I like to change my sample rate to 120 and import it. Now I can see my animation is in here. To retarget it to the metahuman, using the retarget manager, for the puppet I set it up as a humanoid rig and assign all the bones. I assign the data to the female medium normal body weight metahuman, and the reason being is that if I browse to the base skeleton, we can see this is the base skeleton. In order to get one-to-one -one data onto the metahuman from the puppet, the poses have to match correctly. We can see the puppet is in a T pose. By default, the metahuman is in an A pose. If I go to view pose, we can see I have T pose the metahuman already. The T pose is particularly important when working with finger data. I have zeroed out all of the finger bones so they are straight. When I finish T posing my character, I like to save this as a pose asset and that way I can reuse it later. Over here I've created a few pose assets with different offsets. To get this pose asset into the retarget manager, all I do is go to modify pose, select this drop down, and locate it from the list and select it. Then in the skeleton tree, I go to options, show retargeting options, and make sure everything is set to skeleton by shift selecting everything and changing all of this to skeleton. I leave the root as animation and change the pelvis to animation scaled. Then I select the animation, right click, select retarget animation, and with the metahuman base skeleton selected, I retarget it. The last step is to open up the animation and change the preview mesh to the male tall normal, which is Enzo skeleton size, and apply to asset. Now I'm going to select these metahuman animations, right click, show and explore, and copy these. Inside of this UE5 project that I've set up specifically for fine tuning Enzo's mocap data, I'm going to right click on this folder and show an explorer. And now I'm going to paste the animation U assets for my 4.27 project. I'm going to open up this animation and in the skeleton tree, I'm making sure that I've changed the retargeting options to skeleton and that the pelvis is set to animation scaled. By changing the pelvis to animation relative, we can see that the body is not straight. But by changing this back to animation scaled, this now looks correct. One more thing I do is I select all of the arm correctives and change these to animation. And by doing so, we get the volume back in this area. And this is how I got my data into UE5. In the next section, I'm gonna show you why I did not use the LiveLink pipeline. This workflow involves opening up the mesh, creating an animation asset, and select current pose. You have to now get the metahuman into a T pose by zeroing out the bones. I zero out the upper arms in world rotation. The left arm is fine, but when I go to zero out the right arm in world rotation, you can see it's not behaving correctly. If I go to reset this or hit control Z, the transforms start to act strange. Instead, I open up the skeleton, open up the retarget sources tab, and assign my pose asset from 4.27 here. From here, I create a T-pose animation asset. And then all I do is force the root to face the X-axis, make a key, and save it. In the Xsense remap, I've assigned the T-pose, and I make sure to assign spine three and four. Now, when streaming in the live link data, if you change the LOD to two, you notice it distorts the character, but the frame rates jump up. And this is a problem because you want your frame rates as high as possible when using LiveLink to avoid any breaks in the data. 
With Take Recorder open, I encountered frame drops, and this is obvious when the actor is selected. I'm going to uncheck everything except for the body component, which is all I want to record. The moment I deselect the actor, we notice our frame rates jump back up. I'm going to record my data at 60 frames per second. One more thing I need to do to optimize is to turn Lumen off in the post-process settings. I've gone ahead and hit record, and as it's recording, we are noticing we're getting very inconsistent frame rates. Here is the data I captured with LiveLink, and it looks good, but let's take a look at the curves. I'm going to right-click on the body and bake to control rig. And now that I've done this, I'm going to select the hip control and open up the curve editor. They look good, but we see these little breaks in the data. And there are ways to work around this, like recording the live link source instead. But let's take a look at what the FBX data looks like that I brought in via uAsset. I'm going to bake this to control rig as well and look at the curves for the hips. We can see that the curves are really smooth and there's no breaks in the data. And this is why I did not use the LiveLink pipeline. And now I'm going to explain why I did not use the IK retargeter in 5.0. The IK retargeter is the new way of retargeting motion capture data in UE5, and it's incredible. But the only reason I did not use this was because I could not accurately retarget my finger data with this method in 5.0. This workflow involves setting up IK rigs for each character, your source, and your target and then you map out their skeletons through bone chains. I've set up an IK rig for the puppet, which is our source, and I've set up all the bone chains. And I've also set one up for the metahuman as well, which is our target. And you can add all sorts of new solvers, including full body IK. Inside of the IK retargeter with our source and target assigned, the first thing we notice is that our poses are not the same. And in 5.0, the way to edit the pose is to select edit pose but we do not have access to the skeleton tree or the transforms, so the bones have to be adjusted using the gizmo manually. And the main challenge with this is posing the hands and fingers correctly. If we look at what the fingers look like in our pose asset, when we cannot accurately straighten these out, the finger data is not going to be correct. With the release of 5.1 preview, we now have the ability to import our pose assets in here. And with this option, you can now get one-to-one -one data with this retargeting method, which is amazing. As you can see, our data looks exactly as it should on the MetaHuman. And a special thank you goes to the team at Epic that added this feature. Again, had 5.1 been released at the time I was working on Enzo, I would have used this. In the next video, I go over how I got Enzo's facial performances into UE5 using Facewear Studio and the Live Client plugin by Glassbox.